good afternoon, everybody. I've got two uh, very quick things, and then we'll dive right into your questions. Um, I do have a hard out today, so I'm going to be mindful of the clock. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, there is no higher priority for this administration than the safety and security of U.S. nationals around the world. Uh, Russia and Iran's continued pattern of wrongfully detaining U.S. nationals is deeply troubling. We have repeatedly called on Russia and Iran to release wrongfully detained U.S. nationals, but Moscow and Tehran have chosen to ignore these requests. Yesterday, we used authorities established by EO 14078, which builds on the Levitson Act, to promote accountability for those responsible for wrongfully detaining or holding hostage U.S. nationals abroad. As you know, Iran abducted former FBI agent Bob Levinson in 2007, and Iranian authorities have yet to account for Bob's fate. Bob Levinson's legacy endures through the Levinson Act, which bolsters our ability to bring home hostages and wrongfully detain U.S. nationals held overseas. It marks the first use of EO 14078, a, the Department of State designated Russia's Federal Security Service and Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards is, uh, Intelligence Organization for their involvement in the wrongful detention of U.S. nationals. We also designated four senior officials in Iran's IRGC Intelligence Organization. The U.S. will continue our relentless efforts to secure the release of U.S. nationals who are held hostage or wrongfully detained and reunite them with their loved ones. Yesterday's actions are one tool and we will continue to do all that we can to bring Americans home. Uh, secondly, on Sudan, uh, and some additional uh, updates for you all, we remain dedicated to assisting U.S. citizens in Sudan. As Secretary Blinken said, we are actively helping U.S. citizens who seek to depart Sudan to move overland to a location where they can more easily exit the country. We're not going to get into operational specifics given security considerations, but I will reiterate that this is a very fluid and dynamic situation. We cannot guarantee travelers' safety, nor can we guarantee how long these departure options will be available, and we strongly encourage U.S. citizens in Sudan to complete the crisis intake form on the Embassy Cartoon website to provide their contact information so that our team of consular officers here in D.C. who are working around the clock can communicate directly with them uh, on specific details. We are deeply grateful to our allies and partners who have included U.S. citizens in their own departure operations. Multiple countries have provided key engagement in our diplomatic efforts as well as their critical work to help U.S. citizens depart Sudan. We continue to coordinate and lead on these efforts. Over the course of this crisis, we have been actively soliciting contact with U.S. citizens seeking help. So far, fewer than 5,000 U.S. citizens have requested additional information from us. Of those, only a fraction have actively sought our assistance to depart Sudan. We can also confirm that in addition to our official embassy personnel, several hundred U.S. citizens have already departed, by, departed Sudan, either by land, sea, or aircraft. We encourage U.S. citizens who are no longer in Sudan to respond to the message they received when they first completed the online crisis form to inform us of their safe departure. We are providing the best possible information we can to anyone asking for our assistance about conditions regarding safety and security so that they can make their own decisions about whether and when to depart. As Secretary Blinken has previously communicated, the U.S. is committed to bringing an end to the conflict in Sudan. And to that end, the U.S., in close cooperation with our partners, has been continuously engaging the SAF and the RSF. The parties agreed to extend the current ceasefire for an additional 72 hours and have expressed their readiness to engage in dialogue to establish a duration, durable cessation of hostilities and humanitarian arrangements. It is clear that there have been multiple violations of the ceasefire, but implementing ceasefires is often difficult at the start, but the violations of the ceasefire do not mean a failure of the ceasefire. And we are working with partners to ensure better monitoring of activity and engaging both parties to improve adherence. And with that, uh, Matt, if you want to. Yeah. Um, look, I, I, I realize that you're limited in what you can say, but you say that fewer than 5,000 have requested information about uh, leaving, and only a fraction of, of them have act, or actually have actually told you that they're going to leave. You know, 
what, what kind of fraction are we talking about here? Because, you know, that could be, <laughs> that could be anything. Matt, I, be five out of, uh, 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 out of 100, you know, you remember math class, right? So fractions are, you know, could be 99 out of 100, all we know. Matt, we have, uh, we often, we generally do not provide I know. numbers. I'm just trying to, I'm, I, I'm trying to pin you down on when you say only a fraction have actually asked, like what kind of fraction? Uh, I'm just not going to be more prescriptive than that, Matt. Uh, this is a very fluid and dynamic situation, as I said. But the important thing to remember, the important thing to remember is that fewer than 5,000 people have registered through this the more, crisis the, the form. More important, the more important thing to know, because as as we know, the 5,000 who have, or the fewer than 5,000 who have requested information are not all in Sudan, and they might be, you know, people in I don't know, Australia who just want to know what the U.S. is saying about this. So how many American citizens have actually gotten in touch with you to, add, to say, we would like to get out, please help us? As I have said, Matt, fewer than 5,000 individuals have chosen to communicate with us yeah, through this know, crisis that 5, form. Does not, and does not all American citizens, right? A fraction of the of that have uh, requested assistance in departing the country. But all the, but those fewer than 5,000 is not all Americans, right? There is a, a verification check as it relates oh, to okay. the crisis so communication form. You're, I think you're conflating smart traveler and this no, separate I'm form. I'm asking about the 5,000 who have okay. requested I, information. I, I am speaking. I, I, they are all American citizens you know? I wouldn't be able to confirm that from here. It, obviously, it's a public form that anybody can register, but it, the number of individuals who have chosen to communicate with us through that form has been fewer than 5,000. Uh, the number of uh, Americans who have gotten in touch with us uh, and have expressed a desire to uh, leave the country through our assistance has been a fraction of that. Beyond, in and as I said at the top, in addition to the number of official embassy personnel that were evacuated through the operation last weekend, several hundred American citizens have uh, indicated to us that they've been able to successfully and safely depart Sudan through land, through air, through airplane, uh, many of which have been through our facilitation and our help uh, in close coordination with our allies and partners. Sorry, land, air, and airplane, you mean land, air, and sea? Correct. Okay, and do you have a breakdown of that, or a, uh, even a, a better number, or, or you know, a rough idea of the I, number I'm of I'm certainly of not going to be more prescriptive than several hundred, given the very fluid uh, uh, security situation on the ground. Thank you. Go ahead, Kylie. Um, so hold on. So just to just to clarify on that, so several hundred ha Americans have gotten out of the country with the assistance of the U.S. government. Is that is that right? Several hundred U.S. citizens have already departed Sudan, either by land, sea, or aircraft. I'm not going to be prescriptive of how much of those we've been in direct communication with, but throughout our communications with American citizens, we are connecting them with uh, avenues for departure uh, uh, of the country. Okay. And then can you just um, tell us what your message to Americans in Sudan today who want to leave is? What is the best way today for them to get out of the country if they want to leave? The best way for an American citizen who is currently in Sudan and is has a desire to leave the country is to register with the uh, crisis form on Embassy Khartoum's website so that our consular officers can get in touch with them and get the best sense of their particular situation and connect them with some kind of modality uh, to safety. Uh, what that will be will ultimately depend on the decision point of that individual and when they've made the determination to, that it is their desire to leave the country or not. Uh, of course, each individual and each family is going to make that determination based on what is makes the most sense to them, based on the circumstances on the ground. And you're suggesting multiple modalities to them to get out of the country. Uh, again, what we are doing is we are assessing what circumstances they are in, and we are then connecting them with the appropriate uh, avenue or resource. I am not going to get more specific than that. Okay. And then on consular officers who are working on this, 
Um, obviously, we know that there are no U.S. diplomatic personnel in Sudan. As far as we know, they're not headed there right now. But how many consular officers across the department working remotely has the department surged to work on this crisis? Uh, I don't have a, a fact and figure for you, Kylie, but I can assure you that this entire department, the entire Bureau of Consular Affairs is working around the clock to do uh, their part in helping American citizens. We also, of course, have uh, consular officers at other posts. We've spoken quite publicly about uh, how we have consular officers in Jeddah uh, ready and able to assist American citizens uh, who may need uh, consular emergency services. So this is an around the clock uh, entire department effort. But have you surged consular officers to work on this, or are these just folks who were in those embassies and have picked up this new assignment? Uh, again, I'm not going to get uh, uh, prescriptive given or specific given the security dynamic, but we were uh, clear as early at the beginning of this week that we have sent additional consular officers to the region to uh, continue to assess with these efforts. Uh, the Secretary mentioned yesterday that you were assessing as some sort of U.S facilitated mechanism, uh, I think he used the word mechanism, so I'll use that word, uh, for the overland route to Port Sudan. Um, any specifics on that? Any developments? Uh, nothing that I'm going to get into from here, Leon. Uh, I will reiterate what the Secretary said, is that we uh, have a commitment to helping uh, U.S. citizens who seek to depart. Uh, we're doing that. Uh, that work is ongoing, uh, and we are working to more actively uh, determine ways in we can, which we can offer support for uh, overland routes to depart the country. But I'm just wondering, because the other organizations or countries have used these convoys uh, and including uh, some American citizens who have been in them, and then others have chartered flights uh, and so forth. Uh, the United States seems uh, more a little bit on the back uh, track of Leon, this. I think it's really important to remember here that these are collective and collaborative efforts. Uh, uh, our allies and partners that are conducting operations uh, that we are uh, that are able to also take American citizens out. We of course are incredibly thankful and gracious uh, for their uh, ability to do so. But this is a collective and collaborative effort. Uh, the circumstances on the ground are as such that uh, evacuation operations are uh, being able to be undertook because of uh, this 72 ceasefire, a 72 hour ceasefire that uh, many in the U.S. government, including in this department, have been so instrumental uh, in getting. Uh, these two generals to adhere to. Uh, so this is a collective and collaborative effort. Uh, each country is ultimately going to make their own sovereign decision as it relates to risk and risk assessment. Uh, but we are in close touch with our allies and partners, and our allies and partners are in close touch uh, with us. We are offering uh, logistical support uh, for some of these operations to be conducted, uh, whether they be overland, whether they be through the air. So this is uh, incredibly collaborative. The, yeah, U, the U.S. is certainly not, uh, not, not engaged in this. Can I just follow Said. up on this very quickly? So you can confirm that you are actually uh, actively talking to both sides at the present time, right? You are talking to, to both warring factions. Said, we have been uh, in, in regular engagement with both of the generals for many, many days now. In including you know, directly with General Hamidi, The correct? Secretary has had the opportunity over the course of the past many days to speak to both generals. Others in this department have had the opportunity to uh, speak with both generals. We continue to be uh, deeply engaged on this because we strongly believe that a extension and adherence of a ceasefire uh, is not just important, for the people of Sudan and for uh, returning uh, to something that is reflective of the will of the Sudanese people, but it also has been so incredibly critical in allowing such operations to take place that are allowing to get American citizens to safety as well as the citizens and personnel of our allies and partners. Camilla. Um, and, um, thanks. Can you just um, clarify what, when American citizens come to Jeddah from Sudan, what their options are and whether most of them will be returning to the United States? So, uh, of course, that option is going to, uh, that, that, that these will be uh, d decisions based on, uh, on what their own uh, determinations and decision points are. Uh, without getting into uh, specific cases, if that, uh, those individuals have 
documentation to uh, be in other countries. Uh, they're, of course, uh, welcome to do that. But of course, these are also American citizens. Uh, and should they have the appropriate documentation to re-enter uh, the United States, um, they're able to do that as well. And for anything in between, our consular officers are on hand to help them assess uh, and determine the most appropriate next steps. Can you give any idea if the majority of them are returning to the United States? Again, or? each case is so different. The important thing to remember here, Camilla, is that uh, American citizens, uh, American nationals in, in, in country who may choose to depart, there is not a single mom moment or point in time in which they all are collectively deciding to depart. This is a very personal and difficult decision. Uh, you saw the secretary speak to this a little bit the earlier part of this week. Many of the American uh, citizens in the country are dual nationals, uh, many of which have uh, built their lives in Sudan. So this is a very personal and difficult decision for them to make, uh, and it is an iterative process. Do they have an option to stay in Jeddah if they're waiting for family to come out of Sudan and join them? Is there uh, I, I just don't have any specifics on, on, on the exact processes, uh, but of course we have consular officers on hand uh, ready to assist them uh, to determine what makes the most sense. Can you give a sense of what could be happening in the next 72 hours, what the goals are of the U.S. and the other members of the Quad in order to try to move from this current crisis? Well, the goals are uh, quite clear. We have been continuously engaging the SAF and the RSF uh, to continue to further extend uh, the 72 ceasefire and get us to a point where we can have a durable cessation of hostilities and humanitarian arrangements. Uh, and the other piece of this, as I spoke to, is that uh, reduction in violence will allow and co continue to allow for the condi conditions to persist that are allowing operations to take place that are getting American citizens to safety, that are getting our allies and partners to safety, and the personnel and citizens of our allies and partners to safety as well. And what about humanitarian access? Of course, that is a big key piece of this as well, and one of the key pieces that we're engaging with on these two generals is that the need for a ceasefire so that there can be a reduction in violence, uh, get us to a secession of hostilities, and also allow some sort of free flow of humanitarian access to get the Sudanese people and others impacted by this violence the help that they so desperately need. Is there a sense that the generals are hearing in particular the need to allow safe passage for aid workers to get medicine in, to get food in? Are they hearing it? Are they trying to make this possible? Are I, you seeing those signs? I'm not going to try and um, get into the, the minds of these two generals, Rosalind, but what I can say is that uh, it is very clear to the United States and it is very clear to the United to, to our partners the destruction that this is unleashing on the country of Sudan and the Sudanese people and the dire impact that it is having. Uh, and so it is our hope that the two generals recognize that and they recognize the violence uh, that it is uh, and, and, and the negative impacts it's unleashing on its own people. Uh, and we hope that they'll continue to remain engaged with us for an extension of a ceasefire that will ultimately get us to hopefully a cessation of hostilities and free flow of humanitarian access as well. And finally, the 72 hour period, and this may be getting a little bit into the weeds, is this enough of a confidence building measure? Is there a reason why the period isn't for five calendar days versus three calendar days? I, What's I, the thinking behind I, that? I am just not going to get into the specifics of the negotiations and how those are taking place. Our uh, key point and metric is that we want this to be uh, extended and adhered to for two main points. One, it is incredibly important for the country of Sudan and the Sudanese people to these ceasefires that the United States has played an incredible and integral role in negotiating have allowed and created conditions that have allowed us to work collaboratively with allies and partners to get individuals to safety. And that's why it's so critically important. Anything else still on the subject? Anything on Sudan? I'm gonna go to, and then I'll come, come to you. Go ahead. Yeah, there are suggestions that uh, China is well equipped in terms of leverage to talk with both generals. General for a solid ceasefire that could end uh, the fighting. A, are you uh, aware about it? B, if that happened, 
Would you lend it a support? Uh, I'm going to let other countries speak to their own diplomatic engagements in the region. What I will say is that the United States has been working this issue from multiple angles, from as many angles as we can. Secretary Blinken, to take a step back, had the opportunity to speak uh, to both of these generals when he was on travel in Asia, which many of you were on that trip. He had the opportunity to speak with both generals when he was in Japan. Uh, once he returned to the United States, he had the opportunity to participate in an AU minister's uh, virtual session uh, led by Chair Faki, in which they talked about this very issue. Uh, Secretary Blinken, Assistant Secretary Fee, and others continue to be deeply engaged on this. Of course, directly through uh, these two generals, but also through mechanisms like the Quad, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and the United Kingdom and the U.S., as well as through the trilateral mechanism of the AU, um, IGAD, and the United Nations as well. So we're yeah, going to continue to purse this. We're going to continue to pursue this uh, as as in as many ways as we can. Again, I'm not going to speak to a specific country. It's for them to speak to their own diplomatic engagements in the region. Can Any. I one more, and this yeah. is purely logistic, yeah. and it, I just got it four minutes ago, so you might not sure. know anything about it, but the Brits have said they're going to end their evacuation flights out of the air base near Khartoum uh, tomorrow. Does that have any uh, impact on what your advice to American citizens? So our, our, our advice to American citizens has... Uh, does that does that decision, if you don't know, then just say you don't well, know. Matt, I, if you'll allow me to answer the question, yeah. our, what I'm saying is that our advice to American citizens has always been reflective of the very fluid and dynamic uh, situations on the ground. I've not seen this reporting. I assume you're not lying to me. Uh, that being oh, no, no, I, do you? I, I'll, I, I'll no, tell you know exactly who said it. That, Hold on. Matt, Hold on. I, I trust you. What I'm so the point that I am making, <laughs> the point that I am hey, making is that Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden, I, 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 I believe you. The point says that, it, that they will end their thank you, Matt. The Brits will end their evacuation flights at 6 p.m. British time. Tomorrow. The point that I am making, Matt, is that this is a very fluid and dynamic security situation, and when our consular officers are able to get in touch with American citizens who have indicated um, a, a desire to depart, we are, of course, discussing a variety of options with them of what is on the table. Obviously, if these are no longer the case, this is one less option, but each country is going to make their own sovereign decision uh, as it relates to risk, but that does not change uh, how we are going to communicate and the advice and collaboration we're going to have with American citizens on the ground. One question before we move on. Yeah. Do you have any update on the humanitarian support that has been getting into the country or not been able to get into the country? So I don't have any specific uh, updates or reports uh, from the ground, Kylie, but uh, humanitarian access and free flow through humanitarian corridor has been one of the key uh, negotiating points in our uh, dialogues and discussions with the two generals, and it continues to be something that we uh, push uh, greatly for. Uh, anything else on this topic before we move away? All right, Gita, you've had your hand up. Thank you for that. Um, I have two questions on Iran. Sure. First one, going back to your topper about mm -hmm. the uh, wrongful detention executive order, I don't have a question specifically on that, but has there been any movement recently, say in the past month, about prisoner exchange with Iran? Uh, Gita, I always hope uh, when I'm able to come to this uh, podium that we have good news to share when it comes to American citizens who are wrongfully detained um, in any corner of the world, whether it be uh, Iran, uh, Russia, or elsewhere. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I don't have any updates to offer. We continue to press directly for uh, the release of our wrongfully detained citizens uh, in Iran. That's something that we're going to continue to communicate and uh, raise directly, uh, and we hope to welcome them home uh, very soon. Did the U.S. and Iran ever come close to finalizing an agreement? I just am not going to get into uh, specifics of diplomatic engagements, Gita. So any comment by Iranian officials to the contrary is, is inaccurate? I would say that uh, most things that come from the Iranian regime, I would take with a, a grain of salt. Okay. Um, another question. Um, Republicans on the Hill are working on a series of um, bills uh, for further sanctions on Iranian officials in different sectors, and also uh, apparently to tie the administration's hands in uh, negotiating with Iran on the nuclear deal, the JCPOA. 
um, because they believe that the administration is working behind the scenes still, even though you say it's not on the agenda. Um, is, is that anywhere close? Are, are you in touch with the, your allies to keep the, this line at least open, the possibility? So, so let me let me take a step back and say a couple of things. We are uh, this president and this Secretary of State are absolutely committed to never allowing Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon, and we of course continue to believe diplomacy is the best way to achieve that goal. And of course, through diplomacy and any avenue that includes diplomacy, um, will include uh, robust engagement with our allies and partners, including through the auspices of. E3 and otherwise, and so we'll continue to remain engaged on that. Uh, Alex, go ahead. Uh, thanks so much, Madam. Uh, staying on the same topic, the top one, um, on sanctions. Um, in the case of uh, Evan, uh, Evan's situation, why did the administration stop short on um, in sanctioning the FSB only, since it is Russian Foreign Affairs Ministry as denying your request in visiting uh, Evan? And National Press Club yesterday said that you know, they, 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 this move actually equals a monster torture. Um, you have Russian Foreign Affairs Minister roaming around New York uh, streets, you know, uh, lying about Evans' case even before their, sham, their own sham trial. So why are you not sanctioning Russian Foreign Affairs Minister in this case? Alex, let me uh, take a little bit of a, a, a step back. I, I think first and foremost, as it relates to Evans' case, uh, we, uh, of course, were deeply disappointed that the request to visit Evan uh, in early May, on May 11th, uh, for a concert visit was uh, denied. Uh, we have been clear and consistent that American nationals detained abroad, especially those American citizens who are wrongfully detained, uh, like Evan, like Paul Whelan, uh, are allotted uh, appropriate and regular uh, consular access uh, by our personnel. Uh, and so we're going to continue to insist that. We also are going to continue to call for Evan's release uh, and the release of uh, Paul Whelan. Uh, this is something that we have raised with the Russians directly. The secretary has raised with his counterpart directly. Um, and so we'll continue to uh, be engaged on this. Uh, as it relates to American designations, Alex, uh, as we've long said, uh, we're not going to preview sanctions or actions from here, but we have a number of tools in our tool belt to continue to hold uh, not just the Russian Federation accountable, but also hold uh, those who perpetrate uh, uh, arbitrary and wrongful uh, detention of American citizens as well, and we'll continue uh, to pursue those lines of efforts as have well. Have you called the Russian ambassador to the building uh, in terms of... I don't, I don't have any uh, d diplomatic engagements to read out, Alex. Last time he was here, do you know? When was the last time what? That, that, that the ambassador was uh, called. Uh, I, I'm not aware of any uh, recent updates beyond the, the one that happened a, a number of weeks ago. I'd like to get your comments on the, the overnight missile attack on Ukraine. Um, it looks like they are shifting their strategy. They haven't been doing this for more than 50 days. How did you read that? And uh, what is your reaction to overnight missile attack? The number of uh, victims are, is growing. Well, Alex, I. I, this is another uh, example uh, in a long line of examples of Russia's uh, uh, brazen uh, disregard of uh, Ukrainian civilians and Ukrainian life. Uh, time and time again, we have seen them take uh, volatile and reckless actions uh, as it relates to their unjust war in Ukraine. Uh, and the United States is going to continue to do what it can to support our Ukrainian partners, continue to do what we can to hold the Russian Federation accountable uh, as well. I'm going to work the room a little bit, Alex, just to make just sure. Just finally. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, on, on another conflict, uh, sorry, many conflicts. <laughs> um, Armenia and Azerbaijan, um, we're being told that the, the Armenian, that there would be a trilateral meeting here on Monday. Uh, to sort of negotiate something with the, the conflict in Karabakh. Uh, can you confirm that meeting? It's being publicly said by the Armenian side, so. I, I don't have any meetings or, or, or diplomatic meetings or conferences to, to, to preview beyond what I will say is that this department uh, continues to be deeply engaged on uh, finding a durable peace between uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan. It is something that Secretary Blinken is uh, deeply committed to, as well as uh, Senior Coordinator Bono and uh, Acting Assistant Secretary Hogan. 
uh, when opportunity has provided itself, Secretary Blinken has directly engaged with these two countries uh, and will continue to do so, but I just don't have anything to, to update from here. Saeed, go ahead. Very, very quick question on the Palestinian uh, uh, issue. Israeli Hayom and Israeli newspaper reported that uh, in the next couple of weeks or so, uh, the Israeli government is going to launch 70 uh, settlements uh, on, on outposts. Are you aware of this issue? Do you have any comment on that? Said, I would reiterate our longstanding view here, which you are familiar with, yeah. uh, and the Secretary had the opportunity to speak to directly when he was in Israel, which is that all parties should refrain from actions that heighten tensions and take us further away from peace. And this certainly includes the expansion of settlements, the legalization of outposts, and the demolition of homes. Yes, but are you aware of this particular one? Uh, I'm not aware of this specific report, Said, but again, we strongly oppose the advancement of settlements and urge Israel to not take steps uh, that will take us further away from a negotiated two-state solution. Mm -hmm. And uh, second, uh, there is a, a Palestinian uh, prisoner who's, who's been detained on administrative detention, you know, time after time. He's on a hunger strike. He's in a very critical condition. Are you aware of his situation, and do you have any comment on that? Said, this uh, uh, is, is my understanding that this uh, individual is is not an American citizen, but broadly, uh, bro correct. Yeah. But broadly speaking, the U.S. urges respect for human rights and believes that all individuals, including prisoners, should be treated uh, humanely. And uh, I would l refer you to the government of Israel to speak further about this. Uh, I'm going to go to you in the back. Go ahead. One question about Japan. Sure. A uh, Japanese ruling party, a uh, LDP, has just announced today that its Secretary General. Toshimitsu Motegi will visit the United States next week and will meet uh, Secretary Blinken. So what kind of discussion do you expect? Well, uh, I'm, I don't have any uh, meetings or engagements to preview or get ahead of right now, but what I can say is that we have a deep and important uh, partnership uh, with our ally, Japan. Secretary Blinken just had the opportunity to be in uh, Karuzawa and Tokyo uh, about a week and a half ago, where he had the opportunity to meet with his counterpart, Foreign Minister Hayashi, as well as had the opportunity to sit down with um, Prime Minister Kishida, where in both of those meetings talked about a number of important issues, in including Japan's uh, presidency of the G7, uh, Japan's continued support of our Ukrainian partners, uh, and their vision uh, and their uh, mission for their G7 presidency, and uh, um, the, the, the summit that uh, they're looking forward to hosting in Hiroshima uh, in, about a, in about a couple weeks. Uh, last question in the, what's that? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, the Philippines president is uh, expected to come to Washington in the coming days. Is this part of the um, U.S. effort to strengthen ties with allies in the Asia-Pacific uh, region amid the growing uh, Chinese um, influence? Well, Gita, our, our diplomatic engagements with, uh, with any singular country are about that singular country and the United States. Um, we do not ask uh, any country to choose between the U.S. and another country what our engagements are about, are about offering and putting on the table what a deep partnership with the United States of America can look like. Uh, of course, the Indo-Pacific is a uh, vitally important uh, part of the world. It has it is one of the fastest growing parts of the world with one of the fastest growing populations. Uh, and so we are, of course, going to take steps uh, to deepen our ties and deepen bilateral relationships with countries in the region. Secretary Blinken had the opportunity to engage in a two plus two dialogue with uh, his and Secretary Austin's uh, Filipino counterparts before um, he uh, headed off on this most recent travel and looks forward to continuing to engage engage uh, with our Filipino partners. Um, all right, thanks everybody. I do have to wrap today. Thank you.